Here they come. Uh, they're off for the Grand Dogs Grand National. 40 runners getting away, and as they head uh, towards the Melling Road, one of the slowest away, give me a cop, is out the back early on. Sub-lieutenants towards the rear as well with Bally Optic. Any second now is prominent, though. Kimberlite Candy is also uh, prominent. Jet towards the outside with Yala Enki double shuffle and Acabella Bourgeois, and here's the first. And they jump over the first, and we've got a faller down towards the inside. Uh, one down on the inside is Lakeview Lad. Lakeview Lad has gone at fence number one. On towards the second, Jet's prominent out wide on the track along with any second now. Handy down towards the inside is Cloth Cap along with Lord de Menil. They're followed by Manella Times and Burrow Saint and Double Shuffle and Yala Enki at the big ditch. These are then followed by Farclar, wider out Cabaret Queen. Then Acapella Bourgeois, Talk is Cheap and Manella Celebration. Back through them to find Kimberlite Candy. He's currently racing with Canelo. Then Amy Delbois and Balco de Flo as they get over the next one, the fourth. Last one there was Annabelle Fly. Uh, looks like Magic of Light is unseated rider. Magic of Light is out of the race as they go to the one before Beaches. And Cloth Cap and Tom Skudamore, they're taking the brave route down the inside here in the green cap. Jet is right there alongside. And out wider is Yala Enki, Cabaret Queen and Double Shuffle as they head on down towards Beaches Brook. Lord de Menil is in the firing line as well. And they're followed by Acapella Bourgeois and Farclar as they jump Beaches now and sailing over, all safely over. Definitely read well down the field. Mr. Malarkey is out the back of the field as well with OK Corral. And now quickly onto the Foynaven fence. And and up front is Cloth Cap on the inside of Jet, Yala Enki. They're followed by Any Second now in the white cap. Manila Times is handy in the green with the white starred cap. Definitely red on the inside, out wide, a double shuffle as they approach the canal turn. Cabaret Queen is out wide, a Burroughs a Saint as they jump the canal. And Jet rises first from Yala Enki. Cloth Cap round the inside. And they're all safely over with just about the last to land Annabelle Fly as now they head on to Valentine's Brook. And Jet and Cloth Cap are together in the lead. Lord and Menil made a mistake going out over Valentine's, watching the rest of the field. They've all got over safely. Jet, Yala Enki, and Burrow Saint with Farclay and Cabaret Queen. Then Manella Celebration, Lord de Menil, double shuffle, and Cloth Cap to the inside any second now. Made a bad mistake there, but it was a good sit from his rider, Mark Walsh, as they run on now down towards the next one, which is another open ditch. And it's Jet, Manella Celebration, Yala Enki, Burrow Saint, Cloth Cap up the inside. From double shuffle, Manella Celebration has unseen seated rider going out over that ditch. Manila Celebrations out of it. Jet Yalarenki, Farclar Lord de Benil, Cloth Cap and Double Shuffle, followed by Manila Times and Farclar. Burroughs Saint out wider on the track, then talk is cheap. We've got a faller down towards the inside. Double Shuffle has gone at that one. Double Shuffle has crashed out at fence number 12. It's Jet who leads them over the Anchor Bridge Crossing. From in second, Cloth Cap. Then Lord de Benil and Yalarenki, followed by Farclar. Then Burroughs Saint and Cabaret Queen behind those Melilla Times and Disco Rama. Then Chris's Dream Talk is Cheap. Behind those Potter's Corner, Verley en Rouge and Acapella Bourgeois from Bristol to May. And then Canelo, the long mile to the inside. Any second now made that mistake earlier on. Then Kimberlite Candy as they begin to race towards the 13th and Jet is in the lead. And as many as 36 of them head down towards this fence with Jet. The orange sleeves being tracked by Lord de Menil in the cheek pieces. Cloth cap still right down on the inside. Good position for Tom Scudamore. The green cap and is being followed through by Manella Times. Annabar Fly is going to be pulled up before the 13th. Uh, Shattered Love is a long way back with Mr. Malarkey. And OK Corral as a couple of loose horses spearhead the field approaching the 14th. Jet will pick up and land three or four lengths ahead of Lord de Menil and Cloth Cap and Burrow Saint and Appel jacket right in behind them towards the rear taking risks made a mistake uh, give me a copper is in the last group of four Milan natives quite a long way back as well with Hogan's height as they come towards the chair and it's Jet and Sam Whaley Cone with a clear lead at the chair soar out over it cloth cap took it in second and then Lord de Menil leaders are over safely uh, Canelo has gone and Mi de Bois has also gone couple of fallers at the chair at the water Jet going further clear from cloth cap Lord de Menil jumped it in third the then Burrow St. Manella Times, Cabaret Queen, the Grey Farclar, Vierly en Rouge and Yala Enki from Discarama, and then towards midfield, Alpha de Zobo and Chris's Dream is cutting the corner from Talk is Cheap and Acabella Bourgeois. Then Tute per me and Potter's Corner definitely ready is being pushed along. Further back to Bristol de May, any second now, Kimberlite Candy, OK Corral, Balco de Flo. Uh, then Class Conti as they move towards the Melling Road from uh, the Long Mile and Hogan's Height and Shatter's Love and Valley Optic and Milan Native 
Executive Sub Lieutenant taking risk. Give me a copper. And Mr. Malarkey is last of those still going. But as they approach the 17th jet, and Sam Whaley Cohen are still in a clear lead. Jet over the 17th is clear by 10 lengths. Over Cloth Cap is over in second. Burrow Saint has landed in third. A very bad mistake there from Milan native. Mr. Malarkey's been pulled up, taking risks. Has also been pulled up before the 17th as Jet has jumped over the 18th with about a 12 length lead. Over Cloth Cap in second. Then Discorama and Burrow Saint and Farclar. Coming to the big open ditch, it's Jet. Steadies and over safely. 12 lengths clear from Cloth Cap, Burrow Saint, Discorama. Then Manila Times, Cabaret. Queen and Farclaw from Verleon Rouge and Acapella Bourgeois, then Balco de Flo and Black Line from Chris's Dream. Alpha de Zobe, Yolarenki, and Talk is cheaper the next ones. Then Kimber Light Candy in the long mile together with Shattered Love and then Milan Native. Verleon Rouge has gone there. Verleon Rouge is out of the race as they now go down towards the one before beaches and Jed is still well clear. With a commanding advantage, must be eight or ten lengths clear of cloth. Cap in second place. Burrow Saint moving easily in the pink jacket. Cabaret Queen's on the outside. They're followed through by uh, Bally Optic refused at the back of the field. Back on the inside, Minella Times is still handy, but Jet leads by a widening margin, if anything, over Beaches Brook. Leads by a good 10 lengths, maybe 12, to Cloth Cap and Burrow Saint. And then behind these is any second now as they stream over. Hogan's height is right out the back. So too is Class Conti uh, pulling up. Uh, there is the long mile as they jump the Foynaven fence, and it's Jet that continues to lead in the hands of the amateur Sam Whaley Cohen, well clear of the favourite cloth cap, and Burrow Saint on the outside as they approach the canal turn, and Jet being angled across, and he jumps it well. Cloth cap, Burrow Saint, they're followed by Disco Rama, and then behind these is Manella Times in the green cap, Chris's dream nipping round the inside at Valentine's Brook, Jet is clear. Jet still well clear then at this point, going out over Valentine, still must have about a 10 length lead. Give me a copper, made a very bad mistake towards the back of the field. Sub lieutenant still going, but there's a long way behind. Talk is cheap, has been eased right off as they jump over the next one. And Jet is clear, going out over fence number 26. It's Jet by 10 lengths to Burrow Saint, Manila Times, and Discorama. Then Far Clark, Cabaret Queen, and Cloth Cap, who's been ridden along, going towards the final open ditch. And that was four out. It's Jet not so far in front now, but it's Still eight lengths or so. Chris's dream is unseated rider over that final ditch. It is jet clear going towards three out from Burrow Saint. Cloth Cap's going to be pulled up before the next one. Cloth Cap is out of the race as Jet leads, but only now by about four or five lengths to Burrow Saint, who travelled strongly there in second place. Manila Times is to the inside of him. Then Descarama, Black Lion has got notably closer now. Then to the outside, Cabaret Queen. Balco de Flo is also now looking to play his part. Then any second now and Farclar. These were ahead from Alpha de Zobo. Then Shattered Love way back to Milan Native. Give me a copper and Class Conti as they head towards home. There's still quite a few chances. Jet has now come back to them. About to be joined by Minella Times. Balco de Flo between them Burrow Saint. Any second now. Discorama and Black Lion right behind. Jet is running his race. It was a gallant race, but he's fading back through the field swiftly. Balco de Flo with the orange cap. Burrow Saint in the pale pink silks. Manila Times the star on the cap on the right for Rachel Blackmore. And she lands just in front over the second last, Rachel. It's Manila Times from Balco de Flo. Burrow Saint, any second now. The hoops with a white cap staying on. Then Discarama. Here's the final fence in the Randox Grand National. And over in front and over two, three lengths clear. Manila Times from Balco de flow any second now continues to stay on burrow saint wandering out into the center of the track they head towards the elbow with over a furlong to cover in the national but it's rachel blackmore and manella times who are out four lengths clear of balco de flow and any second now burrow saint back in fourth is running on empty 150 yards to go in the national manella times for jp mcmanus henry de bromhead and more significantly rachel blackmore history in the national Men Manella Times wins from Balco de Flo. Any second now is third, Burrow Saint four, then Farclar, Black Lion, Discarama, Jet stuck on heroically from Cabaret Queen, Shattered Love, further back to Alpha de Zobo and Hogan's Height. Rachel Blackmore is disbelieving, but you'd better believe it. She's a special talent, and she becomes the first woman in history to ride the winner of the world's most famous horse race. She wins the Grand National on Minella Times for Henry de Bromhead. For good measure, 
the trainers had the first and second because Falco de Flo has run a huge race to finish runner-up and third having had a treble trip throughout was the winning owners any second now for Mark Walsh and Ted Walsh but they dominated the Cheltenham Festival and now icing on the cake Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore and the broadest of grins tells you the story she has taken her game to another level but more importantly she's taken the sport of thoroughbred racing to another level by winning the Grand National on this beautiful horse Minella Times who's not put a foot wrong Ireland have dominated the season they've dominated this race this result a motif of the season Minella Times it is to add to the success for the trainer of another Minella, Minella Indo in the Gold Cup there you go wow. Rachel Blackmore is the heroine isn't she just Yes, that just about puts the um, tin hat on the season, doesn't it? It's absolutely fantastic performance by horse and jockey. You were saying before the race that everyone connected with the horse always was very complimentary about what he was like to deal with. And I mean, he's just gone through that like a dream, hasn't he? That is a, a tremendous performance, a, a race. It, it really was a, a, a true, true test. Oh. Everything that was said about this beforehand uh, has been borne out. Yeah. And uh, Jet really broke the race open. He ran a remarkable race for a long way. And you, you kept thinking, is that really Balco de Flo staying on so well? But that, that class was coming to the fore. But Minella Times had the, had the superior staying power. And wonderful run from any second now. Well, who, who nearly went at the 10th. And then two fences later was nearly brought down when double shuffle fell so he's done remarkably well to finish third and they finished a mile clear of everything else yeah burrow saint it is that has finished fourth it's Farkla yep. in fifth has run a, a screamer for jack kennedy the seven-year-old former triumph hurdle winner but you can check it now because you'll have had each way bets down to tenth with some firms here balco de flow second any second now has finished in third and then there's a fair way back to the fourth place horse who is Burrow Saint who loomed up threateningly. He appears not quite to have got home no. under Patrick Mullins, Burrow Saint. In fifth is Farclar. That's a wonderful run from him. I'm sure he'll be back in years to come. And those five have got a break as well on Black Lion, who yep. does the best of the British yes. in sixth, sneaking in for the Skeltons. In seventh was Discorama. In eighth was Jet. In ninth was Cabaret Queen, who's run a fine, fine race. So eight of the first nine home were Irish trained, and I think you can make that 10 of the first 11 home, if I've got that absolutely right, because we had a pair of Jiggins Towns in 10th and 11th, and they were a shattered love. And in the a white cap there, Milan native, and you can just see, give me a copper pulling up. I think Hogan's height might be one of the last ones to have completed the course, but we'll bring you a full finishing order in due course. But for the moment, let's salute uh, Rachel Blackmore and her quite extraordinary achievements, Jonathan. Yeah, what a season, what a talent, and you know, just gave the horse the absolutely perfect ride. Ladies taking it up off Jets, and of he stayed on really Making strongly. First ever visit to Lady Britain Ryan for the horse, and made it the right one. It's Rachel Blackmore. And, and she comes back, time. and the only sadness is that there isn't a, a guttural, throaty roar yeah. from the entry crowd here to, to greet her, because this is, this is such a huge moment. So often we've come to, to Grand Nationals expecting, hoping, willing, wishing that one of the very select handful of female riders could really do it and, and really make that, that huge impact. In truth, she's done this having already made the impact, having already made yeah, a, a, a massive splash in the sport. But you know, to the wider world, this will be the result that they'll be, they'll be looking at to hopefully um, open the floodgates. Um, well, yes, it may well do. Um, it, it can only garner the sport positive publicity, can't it? I mean, you just you have a, a woman rider who is as good as anyone else. You know, she she proved it at Cheltenham as she had done many times before and again today. As good as anyone else and better than most. And uh, we will hopefully be hearing from her just as uh, as soon as as soon as she's back in and and we can. Uh, Lydia is upstairs.
Um, a wonderful moment, Lydia, for, for Rachel Blackmore. And you've spoken to her, I think, more than just about any other rider in the last three or four weeks. Perhaps any other rider in a short, concentrated space of time ever. I think she'd be thoroughly sick of the sight of me, I would have thought. Um, and that was typical of her bashful self in that she, she did suggest that to some of her, her friends that uh, the media would be tiring of her. I think that's perfectly impossible. Such is her talent on the race course, such is the way that she rode her way through the Cheltenham Festival so brilliantly in so many different ways as well, from the front or going hard or... Um, just conserving energy or coming from uh, further back. She is so talented. She's shown that already. And um, she's made no secret of the fact that she does find it tiring, accolades connected to her gender. Um, I, you and I were discussing this at the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, she, she is going to be seeing the back of these, I think. But she has to accept yeah. that history has just been made by becoming the first female rider to win the Grand National when she wins the Gold Cup, when she wins Please the Irish the Jockey Championship. Uh, she can find and you see the back of them, I think. And her partnership with Henry de Bromhead is now one of the most successful partnerships in modern day jump racing. They've won the, the champion hurdle. She's finished second in the Gold Cup for de Bromhead, who also, by the way, won it. So the trainers had the winner of the champion hurdle, the champion chase, first and second in the Gold Cup, and now the 1-2 in the Grand National. It's an ex total dominance. It's an extraordinary season that they both have had, and I was really interested to hear how Henry Bromhead spoke of how he doesn't like to get in Rachel's head before a race, because you wouldn't want to be in his head as you watch a race, because he worries about this and that and the other, and he doesn't want instructions to be cloudy in Rachel's judgment, but her judgment is outstanding. Her judgment is, is, is quite perfect. We've, we've seen that numerous times. We saw it at, at Cheltenham how, how tough she was as well. She took four or five pretty nasty falls and yet still emerged with, uh, with that jockey's title. And, uh, she's won the, the biggest of them all here with a, a brilliant ride. It's a, a race I'm really looking forward to, to seeing again, Jonathan. Yes, but right from the off with Jets setting out his stall and setting a pace that had a lot of them in trouble pretty early on it was great stuff wasn't it it's, uh, another success in this race for jp mcmanus you felt he had a very strong hand this year uh, don't push it his previous winner of the race back in 2010 but he's always been a, a hearty supporter of this and he'd be very proud of the run of any second now as well in in third who he didn't he didn't get the rub of the green any no. second now he didn't get a perfect trip he made one absolute haulix earlier on at, at the tenth and then he was quite badly hampered by the fall of, of double shuffle two yeah. fences later yeah and those two combined knocked him back a long way so he's done remarkably well to finish third but the big disappointment of the race of course with cloth cap who was uh, who's pulled up with four or five fences to jump having been in a prominent position i hope he's okay we'll bring yes. you news of all the the jockeys and horses who didn't complete just as soon as it comes through to us yeah cloth cap was in a fine position but he lost his place after the after valentine's and that was that lydia you've been speaking to one or two of the beaten jockeys they've been kind enough to give you their thoughts as they went past i spoke to mark walsh and he said it was absolutely remarkable that any second now i managed to finish third he was absolutely stopped in his tracks by the fall of double shuffle having made the mistake and mark recovering so well at the tenth so he was frustrated and yet delighted with him i also spoke to patrick mullins who finished fourth on burrow saint and he said he had the perfect trip round it was really great he settled he jumped beautifully but he possibly didn't stay and i think that's what we all felt yeah that was a that was a, a very brave run from Burroughs Saint. You could see he was just trying to conserve, but uh, of everyone here, Patrick will be thrilled for Rachel Blackmore, who's a, a very close friend. I think they've, they've shared a house for, for a number of years, and I, I, I can't imagine there are too many dwellings in England or Ireland <laughs> where, where tactics are executed so perfectly. <laughs> no, I'm sure there isn't. Ah, what a, what a performance from horse and rider. As I say, I can't wait to get stuck into that and see exactly how it was done. But let's bring you the starting prices.